for Thursday night here on Scottish, where right now we join Nick Owen at the Assembly Rooms Derby for coverage of the fourth quarter final in this year's Wicks British Open Snooker Championship. James Wattenaar clearly enjoys himself in Derby, a maximum last year on his way to the British Open final, a semi-finalist again this time. His opponent tomorrow, Stephen Hendry, the world champion, back to his very best form. He's lost just two frames in four matches this week. Also through, a very relieved Steve Davis, sitting pretty 4-0 up in his quarter-final. He just straight through in the end, 5-4 against Ken Doherty. He'll be up against either Jimmy White, the defending champion and world number three, or John Higgins from Scotland, just 17 years old, bidding to become the youngest ever player to reach a major ranking semi-final. Good evening from the Assembly Rooms, a packed house to watch this intriguing quarter-final, in fact, the last quarter-final of the Wicks British Open. Jimmy White, winner here twice before, against John Higgins, the young Scot who's rated by many as one of the most talented and exciting new players on the circuit. Jimmy, still only 30, is a relative veteran next to John. A 17-year-old has never reached the last four of such a major snooker tournament. Higgins is unranked. It's his first year as a professional and also the first time he's met his opponent tonight. Jimmy's been struggling all week, a heavy cold for a time and close encounters with both Brady Gollan and Darren Morgan. John has been very impressive. This will be his 12th match in this tournament, including the latter three rounds. Among his victims, John Virgo early on and Terry Griffiths in round three. Yeah, it's been a hard road, but hopefully it's paying off now. Like playing Jimmy right in the quarterfinals now. I've seen him play. He's a fantastic player. He's with Mark Williams and Ronnie O'Sullivan, the best three youngsters around. And, um, you know, they're all three of them are good enough to be top 16 players. So, you know, I'll give him 100% respect and hopefully win. Yeah. He's, he's always been, like, one of my heroes, like, because he's always been up at the top of the sport. But I've always wanted the likes of Stephen Henry and Steve Davis to beat him. Just just like my opinion on that, but the rest of my family always wanted Jimmy Wright to win, so I was always like rivalry with the rest of the family when he was playing. <laughs> I think the whole family will be on the same side tonight, but Jimmy, in fact, took the first frame, an early break of 61 setting him up, but uh, John hung on vainly, in fact, for the snooker he needed for an extra 15 minutes. Into frame two then, John's at the table with a 15-point lead after an earlier break of 49. One. One. Give me one. Well, I think it's a good job for John Higgins that the green, blue and pink are in reasonably safe positions. The green may be potable into the middle pocket if one gets right behind it. 
one. Well, if it doesn't pot, uh, if he should get the white in behind it, uh, he's got an angle here just to Five. move it slightly. <coughs> That's what he's having a look at now. Seven. Yes, you're absolutely right, John. But still problems after the brown. He's only four points behind. Fourteen. Well, this would be some shot to pot the blue and get on the pink. Surely even Jimmy White wouldn't attempt that. Well, he did. Would you believe it? 14. Jimmy White. So both players requiring blue and pink to clinch the second frame. Well, a little miscalculation there. The blue was intended to come up close to the black. <coughs> this is a tricky pot, but it will take him towards the pink. It wasn't easy, but there you see, he was getting a reasonable position out of it. It would have been all over if the blue had dropped. A little bit hard with the blue this time. It's a half chance for John Higgins, but it's certainly not easy. In fact, uh, our camera showing you that the blue was perfectly straight, so he decided to play the safety shot.
And would you believe it, Jimmy played a similar shot to the one John Higgins played a couple of minutes ago, but this is an easier pot than the one that Jimmy had. Can the young Scott knock it in? Five. Eleven in the frame. John Higgins takes the second frame and levels the match at one frame all. That little tussle at the end of the match all goes rather well, doesn't it, for the rest of the encounter. I'm going to stick around. Frame three, next. Hello again from the British Open at Derby. It's the defending champion Jimmy White against 17-year-old John Higgins. It's one all. We're going to join frame three with John to play, looking to play safe. One. <laughs> Green ball. Four. Jimmy White, four. <coughs> One. Nine. Well, it could have worked out a bit better. He wanted to open those two reds up. And he's left himself a little bit awkward. In fact, the easiest ball to pot would be the blue, I would think. And that's not that easy. So this is a pressure shot two ball. for John Higgins. Like shedding peas, isn't it? Fourteen. Fifteen. Thirty one in front now. Needs this twenty. This red and the colour. Twenty one. Yeah, Jimmy White now requiring snookers. Twenty seven.
27, John Higgins. And Jimmy unable to get the snooker he needed. So John takes the lead, showing exactly why he's so highly rated. Let's move into frame four right now. We pick up play with Higgins to play. He's trailing by 12. Yeah, up behind the brown, obviously. One, three, one. Well, that one hasn't worked out, and a great chance for Jimmy White here. One. Eight. Nine. Well, they got a bad contact there, and it hasn't helped the positional side of the shot here. He should have been nicely on the black. He's now got a thinner contact and, in fact, needs the rest. Thirty-two. Now well, this next shot is missable. Always a bit tricky along the top cushion. That one's all right there. Thirty-three. He's left himself a little bit awkward here. He's got a little bit more work to do with the cue ball. 41. But look at that lovely little cannon to hold for the blank. The world wins now up and running. 48. Jimmy will be a bit disgusted with himself there, I think. It seemed, no matter what he did, he was sure to be on a red there, but it hasn't worked out. This is possible, but very difficult. A little thin snick. Oh, we so I don't know what happened there. It looked as if he obviously played the pot into the middle, but it looked as if he almost hit the other red first. Anyway, the red went in. That was the main thing.
54. Sixty-two. Sixty-three. And of course, Willie, uh, Jimmy, long since passed the winning post in this round. 76 points in front now. Seven. Seventy-one. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Well, he won't be too disappointed about that. That should be enough to take the frame for Jimmy White and let all the scores at two frames all. Yeah, so Jimmy's refusing to be phased by his exuberant young opponent. We'll see the rest of the match after the competition, starting with the latest winners. Welcome back to Derby and the quarter-final between Jimmy White and John Higgins, perfectly poised at two all. Higgins aiming to become the youngest ever player to meet, uh, reach a major ranking semi-final. Into frame five, no score, Jimmy pondering a lengthy red. John Higgins first in. Eight. Nine. It was a good pot and a nice little cannon to stay onto the black, but uh, the reds aren't very nicely placed for him. Now I wonder if he can get through to the red into 16. the corner pocket. The answer is yes. Seventeen. John Higgins, seventeen. So we didn't expect him to miss the black. It's an easy shot. Doesn't miss many easy ones. He's a very careful player. One. <coughs> yes, he was a little bit fortunate that the black has gone in such a safe position. Because had it have stayed out in the open, uh, Jimmy uh, could have really punished him. Six. I think there's a red that will go into the corner pocket. You can see it there, but uh, not easy to get onto a colour. Seven. 
the angle is such that it's going across the to the other red and could be hidden on the pink. Seven. Really pinched that one, really just nipped it, the ball. But I'm not sure it can get through to this uh, pink even now. May be able to. Thirteen. Fourteen. Nineteen. Twenty. This frame awaits Jimmy White from this position. Just look at those reds. 26. 27. Jimmy ran out of position on the pink. 39. There's another long red here, and he could be back into prime position again. It has to be most careful he doesn't miss. 40. So, back in control again. And 23 points in the lead at the moment. Hasn't quite got the cue ball where he intended to. To get nicely onto a red, he would have to pop the pink into the ball corner pocket. If he pops it into the centre, the cue ball is going away from the reds. Shot that uh, Jimmy was trying Jorge, there. Jimmy White. He really had a chance to win the frame from there. If he'd have knocked the pink in and taken the three loose reds, he wouldn't need it to have bothered about the two on the cushions. One. Held the pink spot with the cue ball there, so the 14. pink goes on to the black spot, which uh, makes it easier for positional purposes. Bill. 
15. And he's short of pace there. If he's to get onto the red now on the side cushion, he's going to have to send the cue ball around the table. Well, he really got into that. He really pins that one. But this is a difficult shot now. 21. John Higgins. Stuck it up over the same pocket. <clears throat> One. And still a lot of work to be done here. That uh, final red, which will be the crucial shot, could be the stumbling block. So one good shot required here by Jimmy White. Eight. Jimmy White, eight. didn't fall for the bait at this crucial period in the fifth frame with all of the colors on the spots a missed pink could have proved disastrous for Jimmy White so at this moment he's favorite to take the frame black on the side cushion and how is this time down Not too badly, having to queue over the green if you're going to take the pot on. A nice clean pot, but the cannon onto the pink didn't do John Higgins any favours at all. Put it safe, and in taking the green, is going away from the brown. Five. Nine. Well, he's got to play to leave a double on the pink here. He's such a good potter, this young man. I expect him to knock this blue in. And then it'll depend on a double. Fourteen. This is not that difficult, this double. Obviously, always a element of chance in a double. It's a good one. Johnny He's got it. John so it's John Higgins who goes in front by three frames to two. Sixth frame. John Higgins, two frames. John Higgins leading three frames to two, breaking off in the sixth frame. up against it. 
The young man he's playing has shown remarkable composure. One. And a lot of determination as well. Well, this young man strikes the ball beautifully. Takes his time, he's not slow, a nice even pace. He walks round the table at quite a brisk pace. I'm quite sure that John Higgins benefits tremendously from being the practice partner of Stephen Hendry. 21. 28. Thirty-six. I don't think any of the uh, group of reds will pot, so he's probably got to get on to the colour in such a position now to try and disturb something. And a little bit shorter pace. Don't think he can really get into the middle of the pack of reds now. He's just checking to see if anything will go. Otherwise, he'll have to screw into them. And it's the red which is nearest to the black that he will make contact with. And he's got to be careful he just doesn't skim away up towards the bulk end. John Higgins, 37. Have to pop the black. One. A lovely little shot. Just breaking the reds open. Didn't hit it too hard and the reds have all stayed in the middle of the Eight. table. Thirty-six. 
15. Twenty-three. Just uh, slightly awkward queuing now. And it's amazing how much difficult it makes the shot. Thirty. So this black will bring the scores level. And that was nearly a disaster, seven. nearly tucked in behind the pink then. I don't think I've ever seen the white ball cleaned as many times as in this tournament. 38. So Jimmy, one point in the lead. Just has to focus his attention on these remaining reds. If you can see those down. Taking pink or black with each one. 45. He should have the frame safe. Forty-six. Now he's got the angle to get onto this uh, last red now. And being left handed 59. suits him very nicely. Just to lean over the table, doesn't have to play with the rest. 60. Now John Higgins requires a snooker, 65. but not likely to get back to the table. 67. 70. Seventy-four. And what a beautiful touch this man has got. He'll need a good touch to knock this blue in Rex. 74, Jimmy White. And the break. A 74 break has proved enough. Jimmy White then coming back very strongly, taking frame number six. And it's all square, three frames all. Yeah, super stuff, but there's no way the whirlwind could breeze through as many must have expected. Still in the eye of the storm at three all. Hello again from Derby. It's the best of nine in the British Open quarterfinal. Jimmy White against John Higgins. Into frame seven now. Jimmy with his nose in front, but a dogged safety battle going on. White ball very close to these reds. They have to be careful about push shots. That looks as though it could well be touching. Touching ball. So can he get away from that position? 
even with the benefit of a touch of ball which enables him to play away from the Reds this is going to be difficult And John Higgins then <laughs> laughing. He thought he hadn't reached the other red and of course hadn't realised that the referee had called a touching ball. So of course he deemed to have hit the red. And if you're wondering why both players are playing the shot they are, they're, they're stopping their opponent get any chance to get the cue ball back to the balk end of the table. So the crowd applauded, but I don't think Jimmy will be very happy. The white ball didn't go where he intended it to. One. And this is not easy now to get onto a red. That's a terrific shot. Ten. Very difficult to cube as close as that to the pocket. Eleven. And I mentioned earlier the assets that this young man has in his game. And I forgot to mention the most important of all, and that's his temperament. And he does appear to have a, an extremely good temperament, which is the most important asset. 17. Eighteen. Twenty five. Twenty six. I would think he'll play for the red to the right of the black now. He can get back onto the black then. Just uh, thirty two. Got his nose in front in this frame. Thirty-three. 
33, John Higgins. Well, the frame was waiting for him, and John Higgins will be so annoyed with himself missing that black. Seven. Eight. Gone a little too far. So the cue ball now would be going away from the yellow and potting the blue. So he's still got to bring another good pot off here. Thirteen. 11 points in front. Jenny White, 13. And I think he's got away with it. So one good long yellow. Screwing back. And the same applies now to John Higgins. But he doesn't have to do so much with the cue ball. He can virtually leave it there. pressure now on this young man. He needs to clear the table to win the frame. Five. In fact, he needs to clear up to the pink and including the pink, pink to win the frame. Five. John Higgins. Well, it's all very exciting, isn't it? I think Jimmy can see the brown. see it. I might have to manufacture something here. Just swerve around that blue a little. That cost him the pot, but he's got runners up prize. It looks as though the brown is snookered by the blue. Jimmy just requires the blue. I would think a very relieved Jimmy White. Nine. And almost angled on the centre pocket there. He'll just trickle this over the pocket now. Nine. Jimmy White. So a snooker required by John Higgins.
Next in the frame. So it was a hard struggle there for Jimmy White, but he wins the frame and goes back into the lead. Four frames to three. And dear, oh dear, John must have been shattered at missing that black. So it leaves Jimmy one frame away from victory and a place in the semi-finals. Into frame eight, John looking decidedly down after a poor shot, which could lead to a load of trouble. Now he's got to be very careful. A few loose reds here. And an open black. He's looking to coming twice across the table. Decided against that, but uh, he'll need a bit of good running here, I think, to keep them safe. That's an excellent shot. Fucking ball. Awkward queuing there for Jimmy, so it would have been a good shot, but he's going to miss you. Did he get a kick? He missed the pop by a long, long way. So now there is a red into the middle pocket. He can stop on the black. Shouldn't leave anything on, should he miss? One. Seventeen. Doesn't appear that he can get into the bunch of reds and looking to see whether he can take the red into the middle pocket. Twenty four. Super shot. Now a chance to go into the, the reds off the black here. 31. He may have one into the corner, but he's rather close. Yes, if that red will go, he'll screw off the other reds and try and get back onto the black, and it will certainly open them up. 
So this is a very important shot. 32. Hasn't dropped onto a cover nicely. <coughs> 32 points in front. So what a tough shot this is. He's got a choice of uh, cutting the black in or difficult blue. Thirty-nine. Four. Yeah. So two cracking shots. The red to open up the bunch, and then this black into the corner. If either had have been missed, he would have been in trouble. He's still at the table, though and now making a dash for the line. 46. <coughs> 47. Sixty-one. Sixty-eight. Sixty-nine. So it looks very much as though Jimmy White is home and dry, but has this young man given him a tough battle? Five reds left on, a total of 67 points, 75. and Jimmy White, 75 points in the lead. And still at the 76. table. 76. 81. So John Higgins has conceded, Jimmy White clinches the match, going into the semi-finals, winning by five frames to three. Well, wasn't that a great match? Jimmy, he gave you a fright, didn't he? Well, played, uh, played he's 17, there's another one I want to see their birth certificate. <laughs> uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I, that's the best I've played so far in the tournament, no disrespect to, uh, I may have played, I think I played well enough against Brady Golan, but um, I was just pleased that my game, you know, uh, rose to the occasion and I just sort of kept myself together. But, you know, he, for 17 years of age, he plays, you know, all-round game is in a top 16 mould with, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. And that black in the seventh frame could have killed you off. Well, it was still, he still had to win one more, but um, yeah. John missed a, a black that, you know, he pots nine million out of nine million. Just, 33. Just by. Well, John, I have to come to you there. I mean, I think that give you a nightmare for a few weeks to come, won't it, that black? Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it all the time. Like, I've just, I've just went down, and the nerves have just tensed up, man. And I've just like known I could have went four three up, and Jimmy Wright, man, and just tensed up, and just missed it. Then. It's surprising, really, because you'd played so well up to then, and you'd shown very little sign of nerves. Yeah, well, there was no pressure on me. Like, all the pressure was on Jimmy because, like, if he'd get beat by a seventeen-year-old, everybody would have went mental. But I've just stuck away and I knew if, like, if I 
kept playing quite solid, didn't miss a lot of easy shots, had a wee chance of maybe upsetting him because he wasn't playing well, but he and his dues, he played, I thought he played really well tonight. Yeah. Were you surprised at how well you did? Yeah. Before the match, I thought I had a, a small chance of winning, but also in the back of my mind, I, was, I wasn't wanting to go out and like, whitewash for him to whitewash him because he could do that easy. I just try to like, nick a frame after frame, and then, then when, I was, when I was in a chance, he maybe going four, three up, and then I was just caught, and that, that was it. Were you very anxious before the match? Yeah, yeah, I was walking around the dressing room for about 10 minutes before it was strutting up and down, but I've enjoyed it, I've enjoyed the tournament, it's been a great tournament, and hopefully we'll be back for more. Well, I'm sure you will be. Mm. Jim, how do you think your play compared when you were 17? I know it's a very long time ago. A different game altogether. Totally mm. different game altogether. There was more frames and uh, in different game. Can't compare it at all. The standard now is uh, improved because it's more compact, you know, and um, his game, you know, his potting in position and safety play is just, you know, very, it's just excellent. And that's not, I'm not giving him a G because I've beaten him. You know, I certainly should be having a few quid on him in the future. Well, Steve Davis next in the semi-final. Mm, yeah. Another easy one for you. Well, me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, me and Steve know each other's games inside out, so you know, it's, uh, I'm just pleased to be hitting the ball a bit better and uh, to be in the semi-final. And you're feeling better? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. No cods wallop. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, thanks. John, well played. All the best, John. Cheers, John. Thanks. Man. Brilliant, man. So a terrific semi-final lineup. Five open titles between them, and James Wattenar reached the final, of course, last year. And it's Hendry Wattenau we'll see first in the afternoon, not before a good night's sleep. Bye for now.